In this lecture, we will cover various aspects of the lungs, and the topics we will discuss are as follows. First, I will begin by discussing facts about the lungs. After that, we'll talk about the location of the lungs, where they are situated in our body. Next, we will explore the texture of the lungs, followed by their color and weight. Then, we will move on to study the anatomy of the lungs. We will also discuss the structures of the lungs, followed by their blood supply, venous supply, and nervous supply. Finally, we will go over the functions of the lungs, what roles they perform in our body. So, let's get started with facts about the lungs. You should know that when a baby is born, their lungs are pink in color because they are fresh and healthy. However, as time passes and with age, dust particles accumulate in the lungs, causing them to become darker. Another important fact is that the right lung on the right side of the body is larger than the left lung. If you look at this figure, you'll notice that the left lung has two lobes, the superior lobe and the inferior lobe. Meanwhile, the right lung has three lobes, the superior lobe, the middle lobe and the inferior lobe. So, the right lung has three lobes, while the left lung only has two. An interesting fact about the lungs is that if they were spread out, their surface area would be the size of a tennis court. Now, let's talk about the capacity of the lungs. When we breathe, the lungs can store 5 to 6 liters of air on average. Let's move on to the location of the lungs. The lungs are located in the chest, above the diaphragm. Below the diaphragm is the abdomen, and the area above it is the chest. The lungs are a pair organ meaning we have two lungs, one on the left side and one on the right side. Time to study texture and color of the lungs. The lungs are soft and spongy in texture. When a person is young, their lungs are pink, but as they grow older, the lungs gradually turn brown due to the accumulation of dust particles. Now, let me tell you the weight of the lungs. As mentioned earlier, the right lung is larger than the left lung. The weight of the right lung is approximately 600 grams, while the left lung weighs around 550 grams. Here is the anatomy of the lungs. If you look closely at this figure, I'll explain the anatomy starting from the top. First, we see the thyroid cartilage located in the neck area. Below it is the cricoid cartilage followed by the trachea. In short, we have thyroid cartilage followed by cricotilage followed by trachea. This is the left lung. And this is the right lung. As I mentioned earlier, the left lung has two lobes, the upper and lower lobes. The right lung, however, has three lobes, the upper lobe, the middle lobe, and the lower lobe. There's also a notch on the left lung for the heart. Because in most people, the heart is located slightly to the left side of the body. Now, let's study the structure of the lungs. The structure of the lungs surrounds the trachea. If you observe the figure again, You'll see the trachea dividing into primary bronchi, one left primary bronchus, and one right primary bronchus. These primary bronchi further divide into smaller bronchioles. As shown in the figure, the bronchia on both sides divide into bronchioles, which further divide into terminal bronchioles. At the end of the bronchioles, there are small outpouching structures where gas exchange occurs. These are called respiratory bronchioles which further divide into alveolar ducts, leading to alveolar sacs. Finally, at the end of the pathway, we have alveoli, where the actual gas exchange takes place. Let's study blood supply of the lungs. The lungs receive their arterial supply from the bronchial arteries, and they are drained by the bronchial veins into the azygos and hemiazygos veins. In this figure, you can see the azygos vein, the nervous supply of the lungs, is provided by the pulmonary plexus. Functions of the lungs. Now, let's discuss the functions of the lungs. The lungs are responsible for breathing, which is medically known as respiration. Respiration has two parts, inspiration and expiration. What is inspiration? This is when oxygen enters the body through the lungs. It is also called 
inhalation. What is expiration? This is when carbon dioxide leaves the body. This is also called exhalation. Let me explain both of this further. If you closely observe this figure, it shows the process of inspiration and expiration. During inspiration, the diaphragm moves downward. While during expiration, the diaphragm moves upward. When you breathe in, which is called inspiration, your chest expands outward and moves upward. This is important to note as it is a common question in exams during inspiration. Does the chest move outward and upward or inward and downward? The correct answer is that during inspiration, the chest moves outward and upward and during expiration, it moves inward and downward. Question of the day, what is the name of the tiny air sacs in the lungs where gaseous exchange occurs? Only a genius can answer in the comments below. If you would like to watch my other lectures on topics like the lungs, kidneys, liver, brain and eyes, visit my channel to view my other videos.